I'm Dave Beswick, the founder of the Journeys program for high school students, college students, and adults in transition. <clears throat> Here's a saying that you hear all the time, I just want you to be happy. These words are echoed around the world by well-meaning and well-wishing moms and dads to their college-bound and college students. Yeah, I don't care what you do, I just, I just want you to be happy. You know, this is repeated time and time again, but how often do parents and young adults actually sit down and discuss in detail and in earnest what does it mean to be genuinely happy? What are you doing when you are most genuinely happy? Wouldn't this be a real important question to consider before choosing uh, a career direction, a major, a college or career school, or a line of work? That's what I want to talk about with you today and hopefully to encourage you to really consider this topic with your high school um, or college bound student before they choose a career path major in college or career school. You know, society and adver advertisers and new thought teachers, motivational speakers tell us loud and clear, you can be, do and have it all. This is their promise. All you have to do is follow our method and what you want is yours. It's an alluring request. It's an alluring topic. You can be, do, and have it all. God is an abundant God, they proclaim, and wants us to live an abundant life as well. You know, politicians even chime in in the conversation, you know, promising to if you elect me, it will make it possible to live the American dream once again. Elect me, you'll once again have the opportunity to own your own home, have those two kids, have the picket fence, have the barbecue on the porch, and take a vacation and, and save for a retirement. You know, when going through the Journeys program, students and adults are asked seriously to ponder this question. What is it that brings us genuine happiness? So I ask you, what is it that makes you genuinely happy? Not just temporarily happy, but genuinely happy day after day. Is it being, doing, and having it all? Is it striving with all your, your mind to, to be, do, and have it all? Is it having a balanced mind, heart, and body? Is it being independently wealthy so that you can do whatever you want to do when you want to do it? I was there once. Is it achieving the American dream with a good looking spouse and a good paying job and a handsome dog? You know, all good things to consider before choosing a career direction, don't you think? Now, don't get me wrong, most all of the things about the American dream are good in and of themselves. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad to have a home. It's not bad to have a, a spouse and two kids and two dogs and a health club and a a retirement say it, it, all that's good and of themselves but we need to ask our our college bound students and our college students does committing our life energy to achieving what we want to be do and have hold the key at least partially to what it means to live a genuinely happy life when considering together or not, whether or not the American dream is really worth a life of earnest dedication. So this is something that we really should look at. Is it worth it to make the American dream a focal point of our purpose for why we do things, why we study, why we go to school? like you to consider this, all that comes into form gradually changes and eventually passes away. Everything and everyone that we can see, touch, taste, smell, hear is temporary. Even the sun has a limited lifespan. Um, the largest boulder in the world will eventually turn to dust. No thing, person, state of mind, or body of emotion is permanent. All that we have accumulated in terms of possessions, money, knowledge, identities, friends, pleasurable experiences will be left at death's door. You cannot take it with you is simply the truth. Makes a life dedicated 
to acquiring look kind of silly, don't you think? These are things we need to talk about with our students. To take the conversation further with your students about what makes us genuinely happy, try these two questions on for size. Do you find that you are basically happier when you listen to and follow your conscience? In other words, do your relationships in life in general go better when you consistently do your best to listen to what is right, true, and good, and then act on what you hear? Ask them to share examples. And number two, ask them, are you happier when you pay attention to others' needs and wants and then do your best to serve those needs and wants in a disposition of loving service? So if you're a parent or grandparent or guidance counselor, ask your students to once again share examples from their own life when they helped others. Did that make them happy? You might then share the truth that one of the keys, key ways that God speaks to us is through our conscience. You know the thing about God on the, the right shoulder and, and the devil on the left shoulder, speaking in this ear and the speaking in this ear. We see that all the time. We are constantly... Um, in our society, you can see it in the news and all over the world that the choices are being made every day to go for good or evil. So it's one of the main ways you could share with your students. It's one of the one main ways that God speaks to us is through our conscience. It's, we have a personal relationship with God through our conscience. Um, so if you want to take it a step further, consider that Jesus' own purpose in life was to do the will of his father. And what's the main thing he did in doing the will of his father? He listened. Whether going to the mountain before he chose his disciples, his apostles, or in the garden before he went to his death, he asked, he listened, and then responded in a disposition of loving service. His father did not take the cup away from him in the garden, as you know. Jesus listened and went through horrible suffering and death for the love of humankind. He was obedient unto death. And by listening to his father and then acting on what he heard, he showed us what it meant to, what it means to love God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. He showed us that sacrificial love or the laying down of one's life for one's friend is the highest form of love. And it is what makes us most genuinely happy. So when we hear the cry of the poor, and reach out to them or we awaken to a sick child or animal at 1 a.m. in the morning and serve their needs without hesitation, we feel better. It is what makes us genuinely happy. We catch a glimpse of the joy that this type of sacrificial love really brings. So likewise, when we do our best to listen to the wants and needs of others and then act on what we hear in a disposition of loving service, we too are loving God and our neighbor like Jesus did. So in closing, I urge you to talk with your students about what it is that makes them genuinely happy prior to deciding on a career direction, a major college or career school. Consider together if the path of love that Jesus laid out of listening and responding in a disposition of loving service is what makes us truly happy. So after considering these things with your student, the, the next time you say, you know, I just want you to be happy, just might take on whole new meaning. So before you go, in the comment section below, I'd really like to hear what it is that you think makes us genuinely happy. So if the content here has been helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to support this channel and spreading the Journeys program to as many Christian school and churches as possible. Please go to the Patreon link below and tell others about the Journeys program. Thank you very much, and as always, thank you for watching my videos, and we'll see you in the next one.